the Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ, has revealed to me prophecy of what is going to happen, the sequencing of events, a, a worldwide uprising of the Palestinian encampments, all the principalities throughout the world, worldwide civil uprisings, to fulfillment of Peter 1, 1 Peter, uh, 1 Peter 4, 16 and 19, which says that judgment is, begins with the household of God. And so if the judgment begins with us, what will happen to the unrighteous and to the ungodly if a righteous man is scarcely saved? In Isaiah 43, I think it's verse 10, it says that, that we are the witnesses of God. He says, you are my witnesses. And that is the testimony that God has to Lucifer saying the devil, the king of Assyria, and the sword of Assyria, and all the inhabitants of the earth. We are the witnesses of that. God uses his people to do that, not the world. What will happen is after 1 Peter 4, 16 to 19, the sword afterwards will fall upon themselves. Every principality, and this will be actually be happening while the persecution of Christianity and the Jews is taking place. They themselves will fall upon their own selves, every principality against principality. It's a precursor of the millennial age of hell fire unto the war of Armageddon. They want to war against the Almighty. They have sown the wind. They shall reap the whirlwind. In Habakkuk 2, 2-13, And the Lord answered me, Write the vision. Make it plain upon tablets, so he may run who reads it. For still the vision awaits its time. It hastens to the end. It will not lie. It seems, if it seems slow, wait for it. If it tarries, if it delays, just wait for it. It will surely come. It will not delay. Behold, he whose soul is not upright in him shall fail, but the righteous shall live by his faith. Moreover, one is treacherous, the arrogant man shall not abide, his greed is as white as shoal, like death he has never enough, he gathers for himself all nations and collects as his own all people. So this is the Assyrian from the greatest to the least. The encampments of the Palestinians in the universities is the pawns. They are the lowest bottom class feeders of the entire hierarchy of the mountain and they've been given provisions in order to do what they're doing that is their belly that they're just feeding their bellies uh, they're just wanting to get out of debt and it's just an easier way than having to uh, go to school and learn the trade and get a job that's where the world is headed that's the mindset that Lucifer has put inside the people they promised them liberty but they themselves are captive and slaves to sin and that's exactly what they've done. They've encamped themselves in a, in a square, which is an altar, and they've actually put themselves in captivity. They put themselves in captivity, is what they're doing. Not, they're not even, so they're being led into captivity, and those who lead to captivity, they will go to captivity, from the greatest to the least. Shall not all of these take up their taunt against him in scoffing derision of him, and say, Woe to him who heaps up what is not his own for how long? and loads himself up with pledges. And so what is going to happen is that this principality is going to revolt against those that supplied them the money. The Bible says in the Proverbs that the, the borrower is the slave to the lender. So they're accepting this money, but it comes at a cost. And their cost of that money is their very lives because they're only being used as pawns. Lucifer, Satan, devil doesn't care in, for them. In uh, Isaiah 14 says that he, it kills its own people. And also says that the children of Lucifer, they're going to be slain here in this end times, that way. So God's saying they will not, it says, slay her children that they not build a city. God's going to stop this. And the way it's leading right now before it's established, you'll stop and the way it's going right now, this can very well happen this year. Complete loss of the dream that they've had, that Lucifer's given them, regarding prosperity without having to work. And that's something that Elon Musk has been doing in the technological principality. And this is what the Satan and devil has put it in the hearts of people. Isaiah chapter 36. So it says here in verse 7, Well, not your debtors, 
So they're holding, they're loading themselves with pledges. You guys, you know, you guys are going to be rich. You're going to be well off. We're going to take care of you. And he loads himself with pledges. Will not your debtors suddenly arise and those awake who will make you tremble? Then you will be booty for them. Because you have plundered many nations, all the remnant of the people shall plunder you for the blood of men and violence to the earth, to the cities, and all who dwell therein. And so there will be those who, uh, there's all kinds of principalities. And you, you saw what happened at the Capitol building in America. This is going to go worldwide. Woe to him who gets evil gain for his house to set his nest on high, to be safe from the reach of harm. And so all these people, they're buffering. They're using these principalities, this encampment, those people, as a buffer to, to persecute their enemies. They want it to implode on itself. That's what they want to do. Uh, we'll see this, we see this in the scriptures, where they um, basically put the sword to themselves. That's the camp of Lucifer. You have devised shame to your house by cutting off many people. You have for forfeited your life, for the stone will cry out from the wall, and the beam from the woodwork respond. And this is also 9-11, and, and this is what happened after 9-11, when they started doing private investigating, and they exposed the whole thing. Woe to him who builds a town with blood and founds a city in, on iniquity. Behold, is it not from the Lord of hosts that people labor only for fire, and nations weary themselves for naught? The Lord God sits in the heavens and he laughs. The Holy Spirit has, has his people laughing and shaking their heads at this that is happening because it's so obviously exposed through the Holy Spirit. In Isaiah 49, 26, I will make your oppressors eat their own flesh and they shall be drunk with their own blood as with wine. Then all flesh shall know that I am the Lord, your Savior and your Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. And so God says that He is going to make it implode upon their own selves. In Judges 7.22, once again, this is what happened. The 300 trumpets, they sounded. It's, it's like flesh, soul, spirit, and you have those. It's multiplied with trumpets. Uh, the Lord set every man's sword against his fellow and against all the army, and the army fled as far as uh, Bet uh, Shitta toward Zerah, and as far as the border of uh, Abel Mehola uh, by uh, Tabbath. And so, basically, what they're going to do is they're going to flee into hell. They're going to go into that place where they say the rocks fall on us, and they're just going to end up in hell at the close of the age. And so here it says, once again, I will make your oppressors eat their own flesh, okay? And they'll be drunk with their own blood as with wine. He's going to have them in derision, he says, in the scriptures. Revelation 19, 14, or 9, 1 to 4 says, And the fifth angel blew his trumpet, and I saw a star fall from heaven to earth. And he was given the key of the shaft of the bottomless pit. He opened the shaft of the bottomless pit, and from the shaft uh, smoke rose smoke, like the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened with the smoke from the shaft. Then from the smoke came the encampments, came these principalities, came locusts on the earth, and they were given power like the power of scorpions of the earth. And they were told not to harm the grass of the earth or any green growth or any tree, but only those of mankind who have not the seal of God upon their foreheads. So what they've done is they've come into the country. They've uh, come in as illegal, as not illegals, but they are illegals, trespassed in the country. They've taken occupation. They are occupying the land. And uh, they're going to the, to the people of the nations, and they're actually converting them into their ideology. They're like grasshoppers. They're, they're afflicting the, the nation with their, um, with their false vision, uh, with their agenda. That's, and, and so here they are. They're like scorpions, uh, and they inject their venom. This is also what they're doing, uh, those, those uh, bottom principalities. And they're afflicting the entire country. They're degenerating the country. And they're darkening the country. They're bringing in curses. And uh, they're cursing the people of the, of the land with their ideology. And so 
in Luke 21, 11, the Lord Jesus Christ said, There will be great earthquakes in various places, famines, pestilences, and there will be terrors and great signs from heaven. Earthquakes. And, and so we see we have the flesh, various places, famine, the soul, and pestilence, the spirit, and, and then the shaking that God is speaking of. And he's going to be shaking it, uh, the earth, the three parts, through um, the fourth dimension as well. He's not going to only shake the, uh, the earth, but he's also going to shake the heavens. Well, that's when Egypt falls. That and then there's a nuclear, the nuclear explosion uh, that's going to completely decimate it all. But there's going to be that time of chaos where Egypt is going to fall. Everybody is going to be held captive in Babylon. Babylon is going to turn into a prison. 1 Peter 4, 16, 19. Once again, uh, yet if one suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but under that name, let him glorify God. For the time has come for judgment to begin with the household of God. And if it begins with us, what will be the end of those who do not obey the gospel of God? And if the righteous man is scarcely saved, where will the impious and sinner appear? Therefore, let those who suffer according to God's will do right and entrust their souls to a faithful creator. Without faith, it's impossible to believe in God. It's impossible to, uh, uh, to please God. And so uh, we need to be built up, understanding the times, knowing what to pray for, and to prepare our bodies, our minds, for what is going to come. Because there is no pre-tribulation rapture. In verse 52 of Isaiah, it says, Awake, awake, put on your strength, O Zion. This is the city of the great king. Uh, Zion is the, the kingdom of God. Uh, that's his uh, city where he dwells. Put on your strength, O Zion. Put on your beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, which is the glorification, the, the, those that dwell in Zion, the holy city. This is the good Zion. This is the Zion of holiness, where God dwells. But there shall no more come into you the uncircumcised and the unclean. Shake yourselves from the dust. Arise, O captive Jerusalem. Loose the bonds from your neck, O captive daughter of Zion, which is the Christians, those that have received the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. For thus says the Lord God, Jesus Christ, you were sold for nothing, and you shall be redeemed without money. For thus says the Lord God, my people went down at the first into Egypt to sojourn there, and the Assyrian oppressed them for nothing. The encampments is the Assyrian. The Palestinian sympathizers are the Assyria. They're Assyria, code name. The king of Assyria is Lucifer, Satan, the devil, the ultimate one. We have the physical and the spiritual, the, the iron and the clay. So my people went down at first into Egypt to sojourn there, and the Assyrian oppressed them for nothing. The Assyrian has come into land. Now therefore, what have I here, says the Lord, seeing that my people are taken away for nothing? Their rulers wail, says the Lord, like a whale in the sea, and continually all the day my name is despised. Therefore, my people shall know my name. Therefore, in that day, they shall know that it is I who speak. Here I am. And so God says he's going to do exploits with his people. There's going to be exploits being done. And we have to be uh, ready, fully equipped to be able to stand in that day. Ezekiel 7, and it's coming very extremely soon. It could be 2024. Ezekiel 7, verse 2 I just want to read these, these uh, verses here. And you, son of man, thus says the Lord God to the land of Israel, an end. The end has come upon the four corners of the land. So the horns of the altar are going to fall. The four corners of the earth is the entire creation. And the end has come. And why has it come? Behold, the day, behold, it comes. Your doom has come. Injustice has blossomed. Pride has budded. Violence has grown up into a rod of wickedness. None of them shall remain, nor their abundance, nor their wealth. Neither shall there be preeminence among them. So this is speaking regarding the hierarchy of the mountain of Lucifer, Satan, the devil. There will be no preeminence amongst all those who are working in the mountain of Lucifer. The, the fullness of the mountain of Lucifer, Satan, the devil, uh, the Assyrian, all these principalities, there'll be no preeminence because the altars, the horns of the four corners of the earth are going to implode. They're going to fall. They're going to implode upon themselves. 
And none of them shall remain, nor their abundance, nor their wealth, neither shall there be preeminence among them. The time has come, the day draws, draws near, let not the buyer rejoice, nor the seller mourn, for the wrath is upon their whole multitude. And so God is working things in this time to position people, and uh, the, 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 um, there's a, a money transfer happening, they're um, uh, positioning themselves with the economy, with, with chairs and seats. And there's a shift in the economy, and it's going to Esau. It's going to the Assyrian. In Matthew uh, 11, 12, from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has suffered violence, and many of the violence of the violent take it by force. So this is how they had the takeover. It is the sword. It is through the sword of Assyria that they have taken over the land. It's by violence. That's why the encampments are violent. Lucifer saying the devil takes over with violence because it can't take, take it over with, uh, with, with counsel, with wisdom. It cannot stand in the assembly of the wise. It cannot speak wisdom. It always gets trapped and cornered. The only thing it can do is try to have that, that imitative, opposite, uh, opposing likeness of God and fool as many people but when challenged, the devil will use force, physical, brutal force, because it cannot go any further. It cannot answer the questions. And so that's why it takes it by force. In Micah 5, 5 to 7, And this shall be peace when the Assyrian comes into our land and treads upon our soil. So they, they, they come and occupy the land, and they, occupy, they, they tread upon our soil, that we will, and, and soil is also where the seed is planted, that we will raise against him seven shepherds and eight principal men. Seven shepherds and eight principal men speaks regarding the first fruits and 144,000. Seven shepherds is a number of completion and perfection. It's done through martyrdom. It's done through getting the rest of the, uh, the, the fullness of the produce, which is to be engaged in the last seven years, rather than be taken out from the last seven years, because there's a lot of growing up to do, a lot of keeping up at the cutting edge to be made perfect according to the appointed time. So God needs to have everybody on the playing field until the appointed time of the return, until everything is done, the, the persecution, so, so that everybody is reaches the final end of the indignation to be built up and found worthy according to the end of the trial of this covenant age of perfecting the covenant. So God's not going to take anybody out early. God's going to keep all the laborers in the field. Everybody is going to be tried accordingly. In verse 6 says, They shall rule the land of Assyria with the sword. This is the second millennial age. They shall rule. This is after the second coming of Jesus Christ. They shall rule the land of Assyria with the sword and the land of Nimrod with the drawn sword. And they shall, this is the Tower of Babel, this is the, the mountain of, of the devil, and they shall deliver us from the Assyrian when he comes into our land and treads with, uh, within our border. Uh, this, is, this is also happening right now as well. This is actually happening right now as well because the, the witnesses breathe out fire. Then the remnant of Jacob shall be in the midst of many people, like dew from the Lord, like showers upon the grass, which tarry not for men, nor wait for the sons of men. So here it is here. The remnant of Jacob shall be, this is the flesh, shall be in the midst of many people, like dew from the Lord, like showers upon the grass, which tarry not for men, nor wait for the sons of men. This is the second millennial age. Okay? And he even says here, the future role of the remnant. That's correct. This is after the second coming of Christ in the second millennial age. Okay, it's there. That'll be when the new city of Jerusalem, the new heaven, new earth, and Jerusalem is brought down to earth, the new Jerusalem. Second millennial age. The word of the Lord came to me a second time saying, What do you see? And I said, I see a boiling pot facing away from the north. Then the Lord said to me, out from the north, evil shall break forth upon all the inhabitants of the land. For lo, I am calling all the tribes of the kingdoms of the north, the principalities, says the Lord, and they shall come, and every one shall set his throne at the entrance of the gates of Jerusalem against all its walls round about, and against all the cities of Judah. And I will utter my judgments against them for their wickedness in forsaking me. So this is all the principalities 
coming up against the, the cities of Judah. Judah is Jesus Christ. So this is a new world order. It's globalized right now. Uh, Jesus owns all the cities. It's his. He plundered Lucifer, Satan, the devil. Everything belongs to the king. And I will utter my judgments against them for all their wickedness in forsaking me. They have burned incense to other gods and worship the works of their own hands. But you, gird up your loins, arise, and say to them everything that I command you to do. I command you, do not be dismayed by them, lest I dismay you before them. And I, be, and I behold, and I behold, I make you this day a fortified city, an iron pillar, and bronze walls against the whole land, against the kings of Judah, its princess, its priests, and the people of the land. They will fight against you, but they shall not prevail against you, for I am with you, says the Lord, to deliver you. So what happened was that uh, this is the Judah that fell out. This is the false Zion. Right? This is the ones, the, the owners that were occupying in the days of Jesus. They murdered Jesus. You see, so that's who he's speaking of. And Jeremiah 5, 15. So that seething pot in Jeremiah 1, the seething pot of the north that is being poured out, is that, is those tribes, is the principalities. It is, it is uh, the locusts coming from the far north, and that is the fallen angels. That's coming from the north. It's the iron that's being poured out onto and into humanity. Jeremiah 5, 15, 18, Behold, I am bringing upon you a nation from afar, O house of Israel, saith the Lord. It is an enduring nation. So this is also Hamas, from Hamas. Behold, I am bringing upon you a nation from afar, a house of, uh, O house of Israel, saith the Lord. It's, it is an enduring nation, an ancient nation, a nation whose language you do not know, nor can you understand what they are saying. So their quiver is like an open tomb. They are all mighty men. Every word that comes out of their mouth is an open tomb. They speak the language of the devil, and the Christians do not understand what they're saying when they speak. And even these that are coming, the immigration, the only reason why they're here is to have this jihad. This is the only reason why they're here. You can see it in their acts. You can hear it in their language that they speak, their body movement, uh, their attitudes. You can see it. It's very obvious. And sometimes you'll hear the word Israel or Christian slip out of their mouths. That's all they talk about. And that's all they care for. They are here because of their book. They are here because they believe that their God, and, and in their right in saying this, in believing that their God opened them up to be here. Because Lucifer, Satan, and devil is the temporary God of the world, and it invents all religions, and it's leading the, the, the elite rulers of the world. Esau has taken over the whole world, his firstborn birthright, and he swore that he would kill his brother Jacob once his father dies, once he dies to God, once he gets that uh, pledge, the vow fulfilled of the blood covenant with Lucifer, Satan, the devil as they grow closer and closer together in fellowship. And now uh, they are the sons of Satan that have risen up, and we can see that very clearly in the democratic government in America, and the Republican side is not very far away. I mean, they are further away, but uh, they also want to go to war. And that's not biblical. Physical kingdom and dominion before Christ is not biblical. It is the sword, which is the mouth of God, the word of God, that pursues out from the mouths of his witnesses. Fire and the sword that has the people in derision. Because that's the power of the resurrection. When the word is spoken, you can see the Holy Spirit moving. The Holy Spirit does the battle. The mouth says the word. The Holy Spirit goes to the battle. Immediately, he extends his hand. Immediately, he does the work. And he stays. All things. He created all things. And he owns all things. And he controls all things. In verse 16, their quiver is like an open tomb. They are all mighty men. So they don't miss. They're accurate uh, when, when they're shooting their arrows. They shall eat up your harvest and your food. They shall eat up your sons and your daughters. They shall eat up your flocks and your herds. And, and this is speaking regarding uh, the church and the herds, 
w would, would be uh, those that are uh, protesting. And the flocks are inside the walls in safety. They shall eat up your vines and your fig trees. Your fortified cities in which you trust, they shall destroy with the sword, and it's also the word. But even in those days, saith the Lord, I will not make a full end of you. God always has a remnant. And so the remnant must be accountable to God, must be worthy, because there are five foolish ones and five wise ones. Five is a number of physical kingdom dominion over the flesh. Those are the wise ones. They have dominion over their flesh. There's no schism in the body. They belong to Jesus Christ, nobody else. That's their Lord. Thus says the Lord, Behold, a people is coming from the north country. A great nation is stirring from the farthest parts of the earth. They lay hold of bow and spear. They are cruel and have no mercy. The sword of Assyria. The sound of them is like the roaring sea. They ride upon horses, which is military equipment. All the different uh, equipment that the devil gives them in the privy chambers of the underworld. All the different principalities. Their weapons of slaughter, of choice slaughter. It can be any type of weapon. It could be a book. It could be a, a computer. It can be entertainment. Those are weapons of slaughter. It could be a nice smile, a friendly smile. The devil comes as an angel of light. Against you... O daughter of Zion, we have heard the report of it. Our hands fell helpless. Anguish has taken hold of us. Pain as a woman in travail. See that they did not have the covenant of Christ in these times. Go not forth into the field, nor walk on the road, for the enemy has a sword. Terror is on every side. Well, Psalms 91. You will not fear the pestilence that stalks by, by, by day, the arrow that uh, flies by night, or the, or the destruction that wastes at noon day. You will not fear any of these things because God now is on our side. We have the covenant with Christ. So, and Israel is, very, is, um, is also being led of God. And they're doing some feats. I, I'm not a proponent for, for killing. Uh, I don't agree with it. Uh, however, God has to, once again, has to have a military in order to, for the appointed time, to protect his covenant and to uh, position the, for the right exact appointed time. There is no choice in the matter. And they're doing some exploits with Hamas and with everything else that they're doing, even though they're being totally abandoned. And they're willing to go by themselves because they trust in their God. So how much more us? The enemy has a sword. Terror is on every side. So what God says in Micah uh, uh, 4.10, Writhe in pain, O daughter Zion, for now thou shalt leave, uh, come out of the city, and thou shalt go to Babylon in the field of Babylon, and there ye shall be rescued. O daughter of my people, gird on sackcloth and roll in ashes, make mourning as for an only son, Jesus Christ. Most bitter lamentation, for suddenly the destroyer will come upon us. I have made you an assayer and tester of metals. Now he's speaking to uh, uh, Jeremiah. And so what God wants, he wants the wicked to be removed. In vain the refining goes on, for the wicked are not re removed. Re refuse so that they're called, for the Lord has rejected them. So basically, once again, what God wants, he wants the church to defeat Jezebel. To welcome Jezebel in the gathering. Welcome Balaam. Welcome Judas Iscariot. Welcome the lords of the flocks, the wolves the lords of the flood, the Nicolaitans. Welcome them there, but God says, have preeminence over them. Defeat them. Don't get defeated by them. You see, they are to be, because that's the marriage supper of the, the Lamb, um, the, the wedding banquet. That's symbolic. The church institution is symbolic of the wedding banquet in heaven. Jeremiah. 50, 41 to 46. Behold, a people comes from the north, a mighty nation, and many kings are stirring from the farthest parts of the earth. They lay hold of bow and spear. They are cruel. They have no mercy. The sound of them is like roaring of the sea. They hide. They ride upon horses, arrayed as a man for battle against you, O daughter of Babylon. And so what God is saying is that, first of all, God is very merciful. God is, is absolutely amazingly patient. He knows the heart, the desire of the heart. He will grant you that. Uh, but 
there's times for that to manifest when the need arises. If the need hasn't arised yet, then it's not going to happen. We won't experience it. We have to be in that situation in order for that to manifest. And, and so God can give us, you know, you can put God in a box. He can give us the, the, the vision before it happens. We can have a dream, small experiences, and build us up. Uh, however, that's when God really shows up, is, is in the heat of the battle, in the face of the adversary, of the enemy. And so this is coming up against the daughter of Babylon. There's mixtures in the church as well. There's five foolish virgins. And so the five foolish virgins, they're... Their daughter Babylon, their daughter Zion. Their daughter Babylon, their daughter Zion. They shipped, shape shift. They're, they're between two different opinions. One foot on earth, one foot in heaven. The king of, and that's not enough to, get, to be a first fruit to God at the return of Christ. The king of Babylon heard the report of them, and his hands fell helpless. Anguish seized him, pain as a woman in travail. And uh, God says, look, I'm going to save them. They're going to come up from the jungle like the Jordan against a strong sheepfold. I will suddenly make them run away from her like a lion against a strong sheepfold. Right? So he's looking for a strong sheepfold. Then I will suddenly make them run away from her. And I will appoint her over whomever I choose. And that's Jesus Christ. For who is like me who will summon me? What shepherd can stand before me? So it's about being Christ-like. Therefore, here the, the plan, see? God has a plan. We need to understand exactly what his plan is. Which the Lord has made against Babylon, and the purposes which he has formed against the land of the Chaldeans. Surely the little ones of their flock shall be dragged away. Surely their fold shall be appalled at their fate. And this is once again the encampments. All the principalities, the dead body dragging queens, the dead body dragging kings, uh, all of the different... Um, principalities. At the sound of the capture of Babylon, the earth shall tremble once again, and this is the shaking, and her cry shall be heard among the nations. And so this is speaking regarding Revelation 18, the heart of Babylon, when it first begins, there's going to be a tremendous civilian uprisings. Now, re regarding what's happening, you know, God has, has compassion over the people in Gaza, because God knows that they're deceived. They're born deceived. And uh, they believe in God. They trust in God. They have a great resolve for God. And if they would put their resolve with Christ, I mean, they'd, they'd be a very, very strong people, wouldn't they? And so that's the discipline that they have. And God sees that. And God's jealous. And God is the Savior. And God knows that when they taste that of Him, of the real God, I mean, they're going to you know, they're going to be converted. And so everybody in their times, and the second coming of Christ, it's not over. There's more work to do. Jesus, the God of Israel, Jesus Christ is the Savior. Revelation 16, 12 to 16, the sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great river Euphrates, and its water was dried up to prepare the way for the kings of the east. And I saw issuing from the mouth of the dragon, and the mouth of the beast, and from the mouth of the false prophet, three foul spirits like frogs. So, for they are demonic spirits performing signs, who go abroad to the kings of the whole world, they're all, the kings are stirring, uh, to assemble them for battle on the great day of God Almighty. Lo, I am coming like a thief. Blessed is he who is awake, keeping his garments, that he may not go naked and be seen exposed. And they assemble themselves at a place which is called the Hebrew Armageddon. So, all of this, issuing from the mouth of the dragon, and from the mouth of the beast, and from the mouth of the false prophet, once again, are three foul spirits, like frogs. And for they are demonic spirits performing signs, who go abroad to the kings of the whole world. And so, what, what they do is they trigger it. And uh, it's going to be this global struggle that they're struggling with. They're going to, they're going to have no choice but they're going to have to go to war. See, these kings, once again, they'd rather pull a nuclear code than go to their judgments because the people are rising up and they're rising up against them. They feel the pressure. So they're willing to do that. Uh, they're going to just get, men will go from bad to worse. They're going to be totally depraved. And, and that's what uh, is going to cause the end. The Great Tribulation. 
and then the War of Armageddon. In Isaiah chapter 10, says in verse 5, Ah, uh, Assyria, the rod of my anger, the staff of my fury, against a godless nation I send him, and against the people of my wrath I command him, to take spoil and cease plunder, and to tread down like the mire of the streets. But he does not so intend, and his mind does not think. So he doesn't think like God, he doesn't intend uh, as God does, because God says, uh, to Jesus Christ said, he said, that there come a time when they kill you, think they're rendering God a service. Well, that's what they're doing. But God is saying that, you know, he's given them all the power. He's given Lucifer, Satan, devil all control of the nuclear weapons. But he's saying, don't use it. He's, he doesn't, doesn't want people to use that. He wants them to make peace. He wants them to drop the weapons of war. And he wants them to be cold and hot for him. You see, God has his own Assyrian. God has his own e Egypt. And he says in his word in Revelation to the letter of the churches, he says that uh, I would that you would be hot or cold, but don't come to me lukewarm. So being cold is hating sin, is reproving, but doing it in truth. You see, the proverb says those who reprove, those who rebuke, at the end they're going to find righteousness with God, favor with God. And, and so that's what he's saying to the Assyrian. The Assyrian doesn't understand that. The devil has taken the Assyria and the Egypt of God and turned it upside down into a thing of naught. And so he says, against a godless nation I send him. And so he's speaking regarding, he's speaking regarding the rebellion. He's speaking regarding the darkness that covers the earth. He's talking regarding the fact that he's been kicked out of, of society. He's been kicked out. And the devil now owns the entire world. So the whole world is shrouded in darkness and the whole world has become Sodom and Egypt, where Jesus Christ was murdered. And it is to take a spoil and seize plunder, and to tread them down like the mire of the streets. But he does so not intend. And this is the test that God has put the creation through. Who is going to escape this? God is closing the age. He says to hide yourself for a little while, and be ye found worthy. You know, to stand before the Son of Man, the Son of God and the Son of Man, and to uh, hide yourself under the wings and the pinions of the Almighty. Jesus said, O Babylon, O Babylon, Jerusalem, how long have I yearned to gather you together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but you are not willing. And he says, I tell you, you will not see me again until you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is Jesus Christ. Those who believe with their hearts, spiritual, and confess with their tongues and mouths, physical, that Jesus Christ rose from the dead, they shall be saved. In doing that in spirit and in truth, believing that and doing that, not just saying that. Those who believe with their hearts. Believing means to do. For he says, Are not all my commanders like kings? Is like King Nebuchadnezzar. Now he's boasting. And he's saying, I did it with my own hands. I just want to read a few notes here, and then this is done. Civil uprising worldwide, all principalities, volcanic explosions, massive uprisings, all principalities will rise up against Jews, Christians, and then themselves. Palestinian occupation. Yeah, so they're basically hypocrites. They're saying, they're saying that, you know, they're always talking about Israeli genocide and occupation, but once again, the devil does the opposite thing. You can see it. They're, they're genocidal, and, and they are occupying, you see. And the devil started the whole thing. He started it in the Garden of Eden. He's the firstborn of death. Ever since that time, God began setting the trend. And he's been leading it ever since then. And now God's leading it to destruction because it did not repent. It, rather, it murdered Jesus Christ. It's an opposite, opposing imitation of the movements of the true Creator. It is uh, an undying movement. It's undying. They're completely sold out. They're completely driven, as the Bible says they would be. So, the Joe Biden administration, what the Holy Spirit said is a sleeper cell. Joe Biden is a sleeper cell. That's what he is. The administration manifested the sons of Satan, as I mentioned, when he got elected. Uh, the sons of Satan were now going to be manifested because it was that three years 
of great darkness of the whoa, whoa, woes, whereas 19, uh, 2017 to 2019 was more of the draconian horn, the left horn. You saw the pattern that following seven year cycle was exactly the same. And it was uh, from 2010 to 2013, it was like draconian. It was like, you know, and then what happened in 2014, 2013, 2014, 2015 was ISIS, if you remember, when all those Christians were being killed. So you had those, that, that pattern of the left horn for three years, the right horn for three years, then the left horn for three years. After that, the Holy Spirit showed me it was going to be the right horn for all the next cycles, three and a half, three years and three and a half cycles in that seven year cycle. And so the sons of Satan was manifested, as I reported, in 2021. Now we're going to see it, it's going to continue. This cycle should be the draconian side, the Egypt. But it's not. It's going to be great darkness. And it's going to be great darkness from now on. Well, they have certainly manifested. 2024 is uh, a year of physical, spiritual pestilence, famine, and war times three. And we'll see what happens. It's a great shaking. 2024, once again, is the year where the lampstand centers. It started with, uh, with that eclipse at the first of Nisan. And that has tremendous implications. Everything is in alignment now. You see, whereas it, the 2017 earthquake that went across the breadth of America, that one, it was in August. It wasn't completely aligned. I, and, because all the prophecies align. And now we see this one here that went from uh, to the north and south throughout the, the entire country of America happened on the first of Nisan. And that really lines up the prophecy, the prophetic calendar. So the Palestinian encampment, the violent take the kingdom by force. So that's the video. I hope this was inspiring. This is what the Holy Spirit has revealed. And I believe this is definitely going to, going to manifest. There's no question about it. We're in these times right now. It's just a matter of when. It's only going to get worse. And so we need to dig in our heels for the Lord Jesus Christ. And we have to be prepared. You know, we need to be standing erect, as the Bible says, as God created us. With the, the wings of the world gone given new wings, a new heart, a new mind that is the mind and the heart of Jesus Christ, that we're soaring for the Lord Jesus Christ and only the Lord Jesus Christ, our only soul tie. So God be with you. Peace, love, and prosperity of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen.